Hello, I'm Deborah Stein, Professor of the Practice in Engineering Public Policy and Associate Director of the Scott Institute for Energy Innovation at Carnegie Mellon University. I'd like to welcome you to this video on life cycle assessment. This is part of a series of videos on policy analysis and related analytical methods. In this video, Dr. Paulina Jaramillo, a professor of engineering public policy at Carnegie Mellon University, provides an overview of this analysis method, which is the focus of some of her research activities. This is part of a series of videos on policy analysis and related analytical methods. In previous videos, we've spoken about using the four E criteria, effectiveness, efficiency, equity, and ease of political acceptability to analyze potential policy options. Life cycle assessment is one way to analyze the effectiveness of different policy proposals in achieving a societal goal, particularly from those in energy and the environment. After watching this video, you will be able to explain why life cycle assessment is important, identify the key elements of a life cycle assessment, and discuss the differences between a good and poor life cycle assessment. Uh, so Dr. Haramio, uh, thank you for joining us today to talk about life cycle assessment. Can you start with an example of why life cycle assessment is important for public policy decision making? Yes, so life cycle assessment is important because often when we look at the environmental impacts of a product of a process, we only focus on a single stage. So for natural gas, I'll, I'll give you the example of coal and natural gas for electricity generation. Uh, natural gas at the power plant produces half the CO2 emissions than coal to generate the same amount of electricity. Uh, and that's a big benefit, that's a 50% reduction. Um, but when we look at the life cycle of the natural gas, we realize that there are a lot of methane emissions from the production, processing, and transport of natural gas that we ignore if we only focus at combustion emissions. And methane emissions are important for climate change. So by incorporating the entire life cycle um, of, the na of the natural gas, we have a complete view of what the environmental costs or benefits would be compared to other sources of electricity which we would not do, be able to capture by only focusing on uh, the combustion at the power plant. So what is a life cycle assessment? Life cycle assessment is a tool that allows us to do an, a systematic evaluation of the environmental impact and material flows throughout the life cycle of a product. And the life cycle starts at production and ends at end of life with use and any intermediate processes in between. So life cycle assessment allows us to capture the entire um, chain of events that are important for the production of a product. And it extends the normal analysis from what we, what is obviously what we can clearly think about when we think about a product and where its environmental impacts are to cover everything that sometimes may not be as obvious but could have significant implications on the environmental impacts of a product. So for a power plant, what would that be like? So the, for a power plant, for the fuel of a power plant, the life cycle would start in the extraction or mining of the fuel, then there's production or processing, transportation of the fuel to the to the power plant, and then the combustion at the power plant. Um, depending on the fuel you use, there are um, end of life impacts. So for example, coal combustion leaves solid waste residue that has to be disposed of. So if you wanna extend the life cycle to the end of use, you would include the environmental impacts of disposing the solid waste, the ash basically out of the coal combustion products. And what are the key elements of a life cycle assessment? The most important things, there are several stages in a life cycle assessment. There's the goal and scope definition, that's where the analyst or the practitioner defines what are you gonna study, what are the boundaries of your study, what is the functional unit of the study. So when we're looking at natural gas, to go back to that example, we will be looking, for example, at uh, emissions over uh, functional unit of a megajoule of natural gas or a kilowatt hour of electricity. Uh, so identifying those, those, the scope and the boundary are very important. Then we do the inventory analysis where we look through all of the stages of the life cycle and identify what are the important inputs and outputs of the processes that we care about. Um, these may include energy use, CO2 emissions, methane emissions, emissions of criteria pollutants, water discharges, 
So we do an inventory of all of those uh, mass flows. And then the impact assessment is when we say, when we look at what are the impacts of those flows to the environment. Throughout this whole process of goal and scope definition, inventory analysis, and impact assessment, there's interpretation from the, like that the analyst or the user has to do their own interpretation by uh, interpreting what you're, you're looking at when you're collecting all the data, you can go back and refine your goal and your, your scope or refine what inventory um, categories you're looking for. So there's always this feedback with the interpretation. So those are the main, main steps of a life cycle assessment. And what is the difference between a good and a poor life cycle assessment? Um, so a life cycle assessment is only as good as its data, and data is a big challenge as the data used, and the data can be a, very, a challenge uh, for life cycle assessment. So when we, when a practitioner or a modeler does a life cycle assessment study, it's important that they be transparent with the data and the assumptions that they use, that everyone, that, so that others could replicate it. Um, it's important that they use an appropriate boundary so that it captures the as, as many of the life cycle stages as possible. And finally, we need to account for uncertainty and uh, uncertainty in, in our models. Um, so doing uncertainty analysis or even a sensitivity analysis has become critically important in life cycle assessment. So can you summarize the key points that uh, students should know about life cycle assessment? Life cycle assessment is a tool that allows us to capture the system-wide environmental impact of a product of a process or process from the beginning of the life of the product from raw material extraction to the end of life landfilling or recycling or reuse um, and it allows us so to capture the environmental impacts throughout that entire system you have to have in order to have a good life cycle you have to be very clear about your scope and boundary um, definition do a thorough um, inventory of the impacts that you're worried about and then transfer that to an impact, uh, to an actual environmental impact. Um, like I said before, a life cycle assessment is just as good as the data that is used for it. So transparency is very important and always it's good to do uncertainty analysis or at least a sensitivity analysis to understand how your assumptions could affect results. Great. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Marie, for joining us today and talking to us about life cycle assessment. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching, and I encourage you to watch the other videos in this series.